The purpose of this video is to provide a brief, very informal discussion of what is a transform. Now, if you are an electrical engineering major, then the reality is that you just cannot avoid transforms. Over the years, you must have seen transforms such as Laplace transform, continuous time Fourier transform, discrete time Fourier transform, Z transform, and Hilbert transform. And over the course of your studies, you might even see more transforms like the short time Fourier transform, wavelet transform, discrete cosine transform, and so forth. Now, if that was not enough, then we also have series. In particular, we study things like continuous time Fourier series and discrete time Fourier series. And I'm sure if you are a student, you ask yourselves often enough, what are these transforms and series good for? Why do we need them? Why do we have to study them? And why there are so many of them? And the purpose of this video is to provide a very informal discussion of addressing some of those questions. So let's begin by answering what is a transform? Now, we won't go into deep mathematical aspects of this question, but there are three different ways of thinking about transform from the mathematical perspective. The first one is that of a very abstract mathematical notion, which says that a transform is nothing but an operator that takes as input a signal, a function, and outputs another function, and the other function could have different variable than the original function. So what makes an operator a transform and another operator not a transform? And the requirement is that the operator must be invertible. For example, you could talk about x of alpha as your input, where alpha is any variable that you have. For example, alpha could be time or alpha could be space in the case of images or something else. And what you do is you input to your input sig your signal, your function into this operator, which is a, what we call a transform and out comes another function x of beta where now alpha has been changed into another variable beta. Now, the notation type typically is, that is used in engineering, which differs from some other text that you read, is that if little x is what denotes your signal, then capital X is typically reserved for the transform. And Alpha and beta are the original variables and the transform variables. And the inverse transform is then simply defined as the inverse operator that then takes your transform and outputs back the original signal. So this is a very abstract mathematical notion. Let's make this notion more concrete. So let's say that you have a signal x of t. Now, your variable in here is time t. And what you want to do is compute the Fourier transform of this x of t. And when you compute that, the output we write as capital X j capital omega. Whereas now the transform variable is capital omega and capital X is our capital X is the function that we use to represent our transform. And what we see is that we can go back to our original function by taking what we call the inverse Fourier transform and we get back X of t. So this is a very abstract mathematical notion of transform. Ta a function, uh, I, an operator that takes as input a function, outputs another function, and you have a means of going back to that, that original function. 
Now there is also a linear algebra view of a transform which says that a transform is nothing but a change of basis. So your original basis is perhaps the canonical basis, the time, and what you are doing is just doing change of basis to get to an other domain and the idea is that if you go to that other domain things perhaps become better. Now in that terminology the transform variable beta actually parameterizes the basis elements of your tra of your basis and the transform x of beta the terminology that is used is they specify the coefficients associated with the new basis elements. So in the case of Fourier transform if we think about that for example the basis elements that you have are e to the minus j capital omega t. These are your basis elements and you compute how much each element contributes which we can write by saying x of j omega that is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of t e to the minus j omega t dt. Now this is an example where you are thinking of these as your basis elements and x of j omega which is x of beta here I'm using the general notation beta because beta could be anything it could be the uh, the variable in your Fourier transform or it could be the variable in your Laplace transform and so forth and the meaning of inverse transform is that you are going back to the original specified basis so for example you want to go back to your original x of t and that is given by minus infinity to infinity 1 over 2 pi x of j omega e to the j omega t d omega. So this is going back to the original basis and that's what your inverse transform is. Now there is another third interpretation which perhaps you want to focus on the most which is that what is called the harmonic analysis view. What that view is saying is that you think of each one of your signals as made up of some elementary signals and the transform is effectively finding out how much of your elementary signals corresponds to your signal. The way to think about that is for example you can say that everything in the world is made up of atoms and you are trying to figure out what are the different atoms that make for example certain molecules. So if you think of it that way then basically the same equation you are now saying that your signal is made up of if we stick with the example of Fourier transform your signal is made up of these sinusoidal functions e to the j omega t your signal is made up of that you are writing your signal x of t is equal to 1 over 2 pi minus infinity to infinity integration which is effectively saying you have an infinite summation and these are your elementary signals these are your elementary signals and your signal is made up of these elementary sinusoids where capital Omega you can relate it to frequency and how much does each one of these sinusoids contribute to your signal that is what your transform is X of J Omega. So to find out how much each frequency how much each beta or in this case Omega contributes to your signal you compute this transform and that's why it's called analysis equation. It's called analysis equation because you are analyzing how much that particular elementary signal 
in this case frequency contribute to your overall signal makes up your original signal and then you can go back to your original signal by the inverse transform which is simply making up your signal using the transform elements x beta are the contribution of each transform element so this is like synthesis you are synthesizing your original signal from these very elementary signals so in this case in the case of Fourier transform for example what you are saying is when you look at it from the harmonic analysis perspective what you are saying is that your signal continuous time signal is made up of an infinite number of pure sinusoids these exponentials with frequency given by capital Omega and you can write that as some of these exponential signals and how much does each frequency correspond to how much is the each frequency in the in your signal well that is given by X of J Omega your transform the purpose of this video is not to dwell too much on the idea of Fourier transform there will be a separate video for that but I hope this gives you a sense of three different views of transforms harmonic analysis view effectively is just saying to repeat the what I said earlier it is just saying that your signal is made up of a bunch of elementary signals and when we say compute the transform you are effectively computing how much does each elementary signal contribute to your final signal and that is your analysis equation and your synthesis equation is when you now write your final e expression for the signal in terms of those elementary signals which are the complex exponential in the case of Fourier transform so this gives you a very brief sense of what is a transform but we haven't addressed why do we need transforms and there are two main reasons for us to need transforms in engineering we'll briefly discuss those the first one of the reasons is among all the transforms there are certain types of transforms that provide unique insights into the nature of signals and systems effectively think of such transforms as providing an x-ray into your signals and systems just like an x-ray you're looking at for example my body and if you take an x-ray you can see inside which is present but you cannot see that that's what some of the transforms provide you they provide an insight into the signal that you couldn't have gotten before example of such transforms include all versions of the Fourier transform continuous time discrete time short time Fourier transform why because when we look at let's say a signal like this which is some speech we have absolutely no idea this is a time domain signal it's very difficult for us to look at it in time and be able to comprehend what's going on but Fourier transform mathematically it's just an abstraction where it converts it to something in the forms of e to the j o capital omega t but those capital omegas have a semantic meaning for us what is the semantic meaning those capital omegas are actually frequencies so if we are saying that our signal is made up of a bunch of frequencies an infinite number of frequencies then when i see this signal represented in terms of the Fourier transform effectively when i plot the Fourier transform i am looking at what are the different frequencies that contributed to my signal and I get a better sense of this signal than the original time domain signal that I'm looking at so Fourier transform is one of those cases where the mathematical thing called capital Omega has a semantic meaning of frequency and I can use that to interpret to get some insight into my signals and systems that's why Fourier transform plays such a huge role in many engineering applications now 
The other type of transforms that exist are there to help us do analysis or manipulation of signals and systems, and they make such analysis and manipulation much easier for us. What are the examples of such transforms? Well, they are Laplace transform, Z transform, and Hilbert transform. The transform variable, for example, S in the Laplace transform, Z in the Z transform, they don't have a semantic meaning, although if you reduce them to certain parts of their in input space, like the S transform, you focus only on the imaginary axis, suddenly you can relate it to some semantic meaning, but in general, they don't have a semantic meaning. But why do we use them? Because these are the transforms that help us do some of the analysis in a much easier fashion than some of the other tra uh, some of the other means. Here is an example. You have this seri series RLC circuit. If you remember your circuit analysis, you can give the equations for this RLC circuit in terms of differentiation and integration. Now, solving the, these differential equations can be pretty tricky if you stay in the time domain, the original domain, the original basis for this circuit. But we also know that we can actually transform this equation into the Laplace transform. And by doing that, what we end up with is we get rid of the derivative and the integration. All we end up with is a simple algebraic equation that makes it much easier for us to solve this, this equation. For example, in this case, we can solve for current if we know the resistance and the capacitance and inductance and voltage. So this is an example of a transform where the purpose is not to provide an insight, but to make the analysis much easier. So I hope you get some sense of the reason we use transforms. What kind of transform you should use in what situation really depends upon your practice. Over the course of your education, you come across many transforms, and then you get to learn which transform is useful at what point and in for what kinds of situations. For some applications, Fourier transform does the job. For other applications, maybe you have to go to something like a wavelet transform or a short time Fourier transform. So just remember this, the rule that transforms help you do either better analysis in an easier fashion or they provide insights into your signals that couldn't be provided. In terms of insights, the best example is to think of the Fourier transform, which effectively, it's a, it's a mathematical expression, but the transform effectively tells you for x, j, omega, for each value of omega, it tells you which frequency is present in your signal.